this morning, uh, this month, our theme is for His glory. And Pastor BJ started it on Thursday with the topic, Living for the Glory. And today I want to just quickly talk to us about manifesting the glory of God. As was defined on Thursday, the glory of God can be referred to his presence. So it can be for his honor, greatness, splendor of God. And that's what there are many, sometimes when I look at it, it's difficult to describe the glory of God even. Because there are many dimensions to it. But one thing that's very important which I want to talk to us about this morning is that God has created every one of us, even his creation, totality, to manifest his glory. That is it. That's the summary of it. In Psalm 19, verse 1, he said that the heaven declared his glory. And so, if you read scriptures, it's very clear that God, God said we are the temple of God in 1 Corinthians three sixteen. So if we are the temple of God, that means God resides in us, is that not? And if it resides in us, that means the totality of that glory is in us. If it's in us, then what do we need to do with it? We have to reveal it. And that's one of the things I want you to know. So to know that you have it already. In Ephesians, the Bible says we are the masterpiece that God has created. If that is the case, then what are we waiting for? We need to go there and manifest. Praise the Lord. So I could see from these little scriptures I've read that by God's creation, and even by our redemption, we have been created to redeem and to manifest and to express the glory of God. Because God understands that we cannot give what we don't have. And because of that, he gave us that. You know, in Hebrew, I think 1-3, the Bible said, the, the Son spread the glory of God. And if the Son is not living in us, that means we can do it without struggle. Is that not what it should be? So, let's know that. And I come to one mystery. And the mystery is this. The God's sovereign works on earth. We only work with our responsibilities. Everything God wants to do on earth, we will do it with our responsibilities. That means if we are responsible to what he wants us to do, the greatness of God on earth will be manifest. And it will be clear to everyone. So if we are waiting, if we are seeing that there is no, if one believer has sit there, they don't know God, they don't do this, that means you and me, we have a responsibility. Something is wrong somewhere. Because, God's, because we've said it before, God has given the earth to mankind. Is that not? When we call him forth into the process, he comes into the prophecy, and manifests it. So we have a cause to do that. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. You know, because of my time, I'm just trying to rush through some of these things. And we might be looking at it that from the place we read in First Peter, what Brother Peter was trying to tell us is that to manifest the glory of God, he said because we are foreigners on this land. That means we are strangers here. And he said we should live our life in such a way that believers will see it. They will glorify God. So that means there's a pattern of things you have to do. There is a way you have to do something that will make people to see you and give glory to God. And also, there's a way people can see you and say that if the, if the, if the way the God you serve is manifesting through you, I won't serve God again. You know it's possible. So that means that we have a responsibility to live a life that will glorify God. And it's not difficult. It's a simple living values of Christians. That's what God wants us to live. One, he wants us to live a godly life in an ungodly environment. How does that work possible? It's difficult, is it not? But God has what God wants us to do. Things are happening in a different way, but God wants us to still maintain our dignity. Who we are in God. He wants us to produce fruit. Because the Bible says, my father is glorified by this, that you bear fruit. When you bear the fruit of righteousness, God is glorified. Is that not? Praise the Lord. He's talking about respecting authority. Breaking laws doesn't glorify God. You might say, maybe the police hasn't seen me. Maybe he hasn't arrested me. Maybe he has not been arrested. It doesn't matter. As far as God is concerned, you are not doing the right thing. So, you have to obey law. Do you know there was a time I went to uh, Asda and I, I picked a trolley. Not from the, where they kept it, outside. As I was coming, I saw it by my car and I used it. So, when I finished loading, the first thing that came to my mind is to leave it the way I met it. 
So I wanted to leave it by that car park and just drove. I started my car. If something came back, is that <laughs> what we, if somebody who is a member of your church, <laughs> I went back and I have to go and drop that trolley where it should be. I was initially justified that, look, I met it here, so I didn't do anything wrong. But I did. It's not. It's not about others. It's about you. Praise the Lord. He wants us to love people. Thank God that we did about deeper love the last, last month. Loving people is about expressing the glory of God. Let us know that. You have to trust God. He said with respect to the promise of God, Abraham did not waver in unbelief, but grew strong in faith, giving glory to God. When you trust God, you are giving him glory. And also we should learn to give thanks. These are a few things that you can, it's the basic things that we should do. When we do them, we give glory to God. You know, one of the things I found out is that many of us, many Christians, we like to express the physical manifestation of God than to actually dwell in his glory. I will explain. You know, many preachers, they feel great when they stretch for their hand, receive it in Jesus' name. And everybody receive it. Is that not? Everybody's great. Everybody's pastor is cool. You, the uh, listeners, who are cool because you receive your blessing. But the glory of God is more than that. It's more than that. Receive that power. Receive that glory. Power, that power is, one, is part of it, of the glory of God. And that is why you will see people that will minister, they can still go to hell. Or people will be blessed. Because the power of God will still flow. Let me give an example to us for us to understand. Moses was praying to God in Exodus chapter 33 verse 18. He said, God, I want to see your glory. So if I'm, if I'm there, we ask Moses. You want to see glory. You want to see, let your presence in different in, in different. Uh, verses of the scripture. Some people say, let your present glory be with me. Some say, your indwelling glory to be with me. I will have asked Moses, when you saw the burning bush, what did you see? Is it not glory of God? When you were destroying the, 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 the magician of Egyptians, what was happening? Is it not the manifestation of the God? When you stretch your rod and you cross the Red Sea, is that not something? But he still came to a point in his life. He said, I want to express your glory. What does that mean to you? That means that the glory of God is more than that power. He want to, he, because God told him that these people have been stubborn and I will not go with you. And he said, I need your presence to go with me. And God said, I will go with you, but he wasn't convinced enough. He said, God, let me see your glory. That means he want God to dwell with him permanently. And now we are all here. We have the presence of God with us. The Bible says we are the carrier of the Holy Spirit. And we are still not know what to do with it. Praise the Lord. So it's possible to have power and not experiencing the glory. And that is not right. Let me also give us an example. If you look up Numbers chapter 20, when God told Abraham, when God told Moses and Aaron, he said, You go there, carry your rod, and speak to the rock. Is that not? When Moses got there, what did Moses do? Moses did that. You know and if you look at the next verse, the Bible says, I'm angry. God says, I'm angry because you did not honor me in the presence of these people. What is honor? That's the glory of God. He said, that means you did not glorify me in the presence of these people. But despite God said that, the water came out. Do you know that? He did not hold back the water. So the miracle can still happen. When you yourself, you are missing the, you are missing the ministry. It's possible you are blessing others and you are not blessed. So that's why the glory is more than the power. Praise the Lord. So, but many of us, we, we dwell in that place of power without manifesting the full glory of God. And that full glory is very, very important. And, when you, and God says he has given it to you. So when you know you have it, you can manifest it. Praise the Lord. Let's look at one of our guys, one of our brothers in the scripture who actually walk through the simplicity of art and give God the glory and manifest the glory of God. That's Brother Daniel. Brother Daniel is a man that was living in a foreign land. Praise the Lord. And in verse, if you look at Daniel chapter 6, from verse 3 to 5, 
But I'm not going to read I'm just just paraphrase it. In verse 3, the Bible says Darius found Daniel more responsible just in that kind of way. And Darius planned to promote him. My brethren, one of the things I'm saying to you is that every little opportunity we have, we can manifest the glory of God. Daniel was, the Darius wanted to promote Daniel. Not because Daniel is a child of God. Hello? He did not want to promote him, not because he's a man that devoted to God. No. Daniel, Darius doesn't care. The same way, the place we are walking today. Nobody cares whether you are a Christian or not a Christian. All that matters is that your productivity matters a lot. Do we all agree? And Isaiah wanted to promote him. He promoted to promote him because he was good. And because he wanted to promote him, the old people, the other members of his team, they decided that this man does not want to be promoted. What are they looking for? The Bible said they are looking for a place. They are looking for whether he has corrupted. They could not find. They were looking whether he was negligent. They could not find. That is in verse 4 to 5. Then they said the only way we can catch this man is because of who is God. Many of us are praying for opportunity to have our place of work as our missionary feed. But when we want to do it, when we go office in the morning, the first thing we open, we open our Bible in our computer. You will be sad. And God will be glorified. Yes, that's not what God sent us to do. Praise the Lord. You should go to work at 8 a.m. If you that's the time of your office, sit and do the job you are employed to do. If you want that, you want to pray during your break time, carry your Bible, go and read. Carry your Bible to the toilet, go and read it and pray to God in those places. Many of us, we have been doing what we are not supposed to do in the place of work, and rather than creating friendship, we created enmity. So, what I'm saying is that Daniel was working very hard here, and the king loved his service. It was because his service pleased the Darius agenda. That Darius wanted to promote it, was planned to promote him. So, anywhere we find ourselves, we can manifest the glory of God. What did, the, what did Peter says? Obey the authority. Do what is right at all times so that people might see your light. They will glorify me. Don't give people excuses to malign the name of God on your, on your behalf. Don't do that. Praise the Lord. So, because of that, they plan to do that to him. But they look for corruption, they could not find. They look for whether it was negligent in his place of work, they could not find. What else can they do? Nothing. They now say, oh, okay, maybe this man served God. So let's use the place. Nobody should pray to God anymore. And the Bible says, Daniel heard about the decree. He went to his house, opened his windows. If I'm Daniel, I will close my window. Praise the Lord. To make life easy, is it not? This God I'm praying for, God answer me. Is it not? But the Bible says he opened it as his usual manner. He has been doing it. So why should I, if I have to go between my lunchtime, 11 to 12, to go and pray, and you ask me for a meeting, I'm entitled to my break, to my break. I can say I'm not available. I want to do something. It's not a matter of maybe I'm proud. You know? So what I mean is that you can't punish me for that, for going for lunch. Because it's a lunch time. So, Daniel was consistent throughout this whole process. And finally, they caught Daniel. They put Daniel into the Daniel, uh, lion's den. And the king could not sleep. We all know the story. And they brought him out. And the first thing that happened is that the king said, everybody in this whole world must celebrate the king of Daniel. God of Daniel. Is that not? Which means that God, this man, throughout this normal protocols of life, through doing the normal things at the normal time, he was able to manifest the glory of God and the whole world could see it. So it's not by carrying guns. We don't need guns. We don't need argument. We don't need to be struggling. All we need to do is just to do the normal stuff we need to do on our daily basis. And the name of God will be glorified in our lives. Praise the Lord. So he worked very hard for King. King you know that. He prayed faithfully to God. And God used him for his purpose. That's all. That's all we need to do. And it's not difficult for us to do. I pray that God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. The second person was 
David. Um, yeah, David. You know, when he went to meet Goliath, the first thing he said, at the beginning, even when they were saying, he was telling King, he said, King, oh, you king live forever. When I faced with lions and bear, the God Almighty saw me through and I was able to conquer. That is a manifestation of somebody who knows the purpose of God in their life and is ready to relate to anybody who cares to listen. And when he faced Goliath, the first thing he said, that he said today, everybody in the whole world will know that God is the king of all. is the, the ultimate. And at the end of the day, we all realized that God came through for, that, for, for, for David. He used stones to kill Goliath. We see say it today. He didn't use many magic. He didn't use anything difficult. What I want to tell me is that as soon what happened in Daniel and David is that anytime we decide to push forward with the glory of God, God has our back. Do we understand that? God has our back. Because Daniel would have been destroyed by the, by the lion. But God was there. He said, no, this man is working for my glory. I will defend him. David tried the same thing. He said, this guy, this small boy is working for my glory. I will defend him. There is no time you will go out for God's glory. You will make up your mind that will be doing what is right. In the name of the Lord, that God will not have your back. I'm very sure of that. I'm confident of that. Praise the Lord. We know in Ephesians chapter 6, God talked to us about the full armors of God. You will know in all, all these armors, the only one that doesn't have a cover is the back. Do we know that? There's nothing to cover your back. Which God means that I've given you all you need to fight the battles of life. All you need to make my name be glorified everywhere you go. Faithfulness, faith, prayer, everything you have, you got it. Just go ahead for it. For the back, leave it for me. Do you know why? Because the glory of God we keep watch at your back. You might not believe me. Let's see Isaiah 58 verse 8. He said, then your salvation will come like the down and your wound like quickly ill. Your goodness will lead you forward and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. So when you are moving forward with doing what is right and people are even saying these things are not right enough and you made up your mind to focus on that, God is preserving you at the back. God got your back. So don't worry about the back. God is there preserving you and it's leading you forward. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. So as I want to round off, I put it in the slide. I say it's within your God-given ability to manifest his glory. So do not let anything stand on your way. You have everything you